Hello, hello, welcome back. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about how um, my zero waste lifestyle affects my minimalist lifestyle, if you like. Um, I try to do both. I try to be minimalist. I try to be zero waste. I don't succeed in either of those things. I've got a long way to go, but I'm always striving for the day when I could say I'm a minimalist or I'm zero waste. I don't think the zero waste because of the word zero, which kind of implies that you have absolutely no rubbish leaving your house. Um, I don't think I'll ever achieve that, but it's a term that's, you know, become popular and people understand what you mean when you say zero waste. So I use that term. So I find that because I have this big issue i've done quite a bit of research into sort of the, the effect of plastics the effect of recycling the effect of producing and so on and so on and i have this big issue with plastics in general and if i see plastics going into recycling um okay it's good for them to be recycled and it uses less energy to recycle plastic than it does to make virgin plastic but i still you know, I do things like wash out my milk bottles, wash everything out before I put it out for for um, recycling. Um, I'm hoping that people who don't wash them, it doesn't affect their recyclability. But I just uh, really don't like seeing bins full of recycled, full of, full of plastic to go to recycling. And people think that because they're putting it in recycling, they're doing their bit. I far prefer to try and avoid the plastic altogether. So anyway, so what I tend to do, which really affects my minimalist lifestyle, is I almost collect plastic. Um, I see plastic and I think, oh, that could be reused for this, that, the other thing. And so I sort of collect it up. So my house becomes a little bit junked up with plastic. So let me give you an example. I've worked with children for 32 years. And although I have now... I don't want to say retired because I'm not really old enough to be retired and I'm not taking a pension or anything. But now I've given up work. Um, I volunteer with children. And so um, I do still work with children a little bit. And so I'll take things like this. This came from work because at work we'll make cakes and things with the children. And this contained hundreds and thousands, you know, little sprinkles, gold stars, those things for making the cakes. And when it was finished with, it was going straight into recycling. And I thought, oh, no. It's a, it's a good size for little hands. Little hands can hold on to this quite nicely. It's got a fairly big opening so little people can use it for filling. Um, and so I take things like this, which is some um, risotto rice that had been in my house for probably about a year and I hadn't used it. And I thought well, it's probably not necessarily safe to eat. Well, not, I won't say not safe, but not good to eat, having been in the house for so long. Put it into one of these plastic tubs, which again came from work. Um, and was, uh, well, I wasn't going into recycling, but anyway. Um, and so with the rice, and then I'll take things like this, which is a little protein powder scoop that came from my daughter's house, I think. Or this, which came <laughs> in some Vanish Oxy stuff. I think this might have been somebody was going to throw it into recycling. And I'll take these and I know that little children, you know, maybe two, three, four year olds can scoop the rice and because it's a nice wide opening they can scoop and fill they don't need the bottles to be too big because they get heavy quite quickly for those little children and this is ideal this stops you from having to go out and spend money buying plastic toys and things for your children you can buy plastic scoops specifically for children to do scooping but why bother buying them why waste your money and create more um impact on the environment because somebody has had to produce that plastic scoop when this one was just going to be chucked out anyway and but what then happens is <laughs> i end up with a bag full of plastic in my house ready to take to the toddler group um next week and um you know i've got more of these things um i've also got some of these little ones i like yakult it's one of those things you cannot get unless it's in a plastic bottle. I don't take that all the time, but sometimes I, I like to sort of uh, fix my gut. Sometimes I have a bit of trouble with my gut and I think, oh, I best have a week's worth of Yakult. So these little things as well um, are perfect for water play, you know, filling up and pouring. And um, 
And so, you know, it kind of drives my husband mad that we've got bags around the house and he'll go, is this for recycling? And I'm like, no, it's not. Don't fill my recycling bin up. So it really sort of affects my minimalist um, lifestyle, I guess. And there are so many things that I struggle to get rid of because I don't want to just throw them in the bin. And I'll look at them and I'll think that's got some kind of value to me, but not enough value to put it in a charity shop for someone else to, to use but too much value to just put it in the bin. Am I making any sense? And so they'll hang around my house for ages and I probably think, well, I know I'm not gonna use that ever again, but I just don't know how to dispose of it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, I, I won't go into all this different recycling schemes that you can sign up to, because that's not what this video is about. But uh, because I've been on this minimalist journey, I have found that around my house, I've got quite a lot of little things. And you just think to yourself, well, that could be repurposed in some way or other. And um, I don't want to just stick it in recycling. So there you go. Also, plastic spoons. Again, these plastic spoons. The problem we have with plastic, and I've said it before, but I haven't uploaded a video for quite a while, so you, you may not have seen that video or I may have deleted it. The problem we have with plastic is we think of it as a disposable commodity and we shouldn't. We should think of it as valuable. And so every plastic item, we should think, how many uses can I get out of it? And the more uses you get, the better. This plastic spoon is not a cheap quality plastic spoon. I mean, OK, it's bendy. But compared to a lot of plastic spoons, this is quite a good quality one. And it could be used and washed at least a dozen times, probably more. I reckon somebody could have one of these in their kitchen drawer for years to come. I might not put it in the dishwasher, it may shrink, I'm not quite sure. But the point is, this should not be used once and thrown away. But for slightly older children, this is also perfect for scooping the rice and pouring the rice because it helps with their dexterity, helps with their, their grip and so on, and, you know, learning to hold and use a spoon. Um, and so <laughs> if I was to go to um, a party where they had disposable spoons like this and I thought they were all going in the bin. Sometimes at a party, everything goes in a black bin bag because it's easier than trying to separate the rubbish from the recycling. And that kind of bugs me as well. I have been, I have been known to delve into bins to take things out of the rubbish and put them into the recycling because that's how sad I am or how committed to the cause. I don't know, however you want to word it. And if I saw plastic spoons like this going in the bin, I might be inclined to say, look, oh, I'll have those wash them and they'll be reused. So I do have, and I definitely have not bought these. Please trust me in that. I have not bought them, but I've got, I've got four that I can just grab my hands on straight away. And if I delve to the bottom of that bag, which I'm not going to do because it probably make a noise, um, there may be more. Uh, yeah, so I've kind of, in a way, I have collected somebody else's rubbish and brought it into my home, affecting my minimalism. Um, yes, causing one area of my house which is full of stuff because we don't use our dining room. Since the children left home, we just don't use it. And now we can't use it because it's like, chuck it in the dining room. Or that bag full of plastic bottles, chuck it in the dining room. So um, yeah, I'm a little bit of a nutcase when it comes to recycling stuff. Another thing I do, which you might think is a bit crazy, is here's an example. We went out for brunch yesterday and the napkins on the table had been handled by the family but not necessarily used maybe they dabbed a mouth and I knew that those napkins were going to go straight in the bin even the non-used ones since Covid and possibly before Covid just for hygiene reasons if the napkins have not been used they probably still just go straight in the bin and so I collect them up as well and I stick them in my handbag and I find them really handy for things like, you know, when I've washed my hands in a public toilet and I don't want to use the blow dryers because sometimes they take forever um, and I don't want to use their paper towels. So I will get one out of my bag and I think it's had its second. It's not gone straight to the bin without being used, basically, or I'll use them to blow my nose. Sometimes it's nice to I do have uh, cloth handkerchiefs, but sometimes it's nice to be able to blow your nose. You know, if you've got a cold and it's really disgusting, just blow it all into a napkin and throw it away. So, yeah, I'm really quite sad. And, and I'll say to people, oh, I'll take that napkin and they'll go, why? I say, well, it's just going to go in the bin and I, I can use it. <laughs> Makes me look like uh, a right skin flint. Are you familiar with the word skin flint? Is it just a British word? But it basically means that you're really tight fisted. Um, incredibly frugal would be the way to describe it. So, yeah, I collect rubbish and you cannot call that minimalism. And I'll often watch minimalist videos and I'll see people, you know, fair enough, their houses are usually absolutely full of junk. And if you watch programmes like Hoarders, everything's going in a skip. They don't tend to sort it out because they know it's just got to go. We've got to get it off the property. We've got to get it out the door. It's got to be gone. 
I struggle with that, I really do, because my mindset is so um, fixed on not putting stuff into landfill if we can help it. And ideally, not sending it to recycling either, really, because um, there are two arguments for it. And I suppose it wasn't what I wanted to get into in this video. There are two arguments. If stuff's not recycled, then you have to make new stuff, admittedly. Um, but you're better off buying something like a glass bottle than a plastic bottle, um, because a glass bottle can just be recycled indefinitely forever and ever and ever. Whereas plastic does just get downcycled and does eventually end up... Um, sorry, I thought my phone had stopped recording for a minute, does eventually end up just in landfill. And it still uses a lot of water and energy and so on to um, recycle these things. So, for example, using a stainless steel water bottle that you just wash and it never needs to be sent to recycling or the bin, hopefully you could keep it for the rest of your life, is far better than going out and buying a plastic bottle. And it's also better than buying a glass bottle because the glass bottle will still need to be recycled. So anyway, I wasn't getting into that. I just wanted to talk about how this, I've been doing this minimalist challenge and I have found that there are a lot of things that I'm struggling to get rid of because I know that they have got a use or a purpose in them. So, you know, this bag of plastic bottles that I'm taking to, to toddler group for the children to use could be classed as about 30 items I'm getting rid of. Um, and I suppose I could still class it because I shall take it to the toddler group and hopefully leave it there. But you see, the way my mind works, and this is why I'm probably a bit, you could perhaps call me extreme when it comes to, to zero waste and recycling and the environment, for example, is if I take this to toddler group and they have great fun pouring water and pouring rice and filling the bottles and, and stuff, um, if I decide I'll leave it there for next time, somebody might come along and think, oh, this is all for the recycling and it's all gone. And so next time we want to do an activity like the pouring and the filling activity, I have to collect a whole new load of bottles. And sometimes that can be a major problem because if you can say to people, will you save your plastic bottles for me? They need to be this, this size or that size. I like the wide mouth bottles and blah, blah. They might go out and buy something with a good excuse. They might think, oh, well, we, we need these. So uh, I'll buy it because Vicky needs it. So, um, I'm encouraging people to buy it sometimes then, aren't I? It's one of the reasons I don't necessarily like all these junk craft videos because people might go out and buy stuff because they want to make the craft out of the junk. <laughs> it's great if you've got the junk, obviously, um, but don't create junk because you want to make a craft or do an activity. Use what you've got, go around and find what you've got. Oh, another thing that's just caught my eye. As on this minimalist challenge, I just decided, this is another thing, you see, this little, um, it's a cardboard, cup type thing it's it is lined with a sort of plasticky lining because it must have had um something liquidy in it can't remember what it had in it i might normally keep that thinking well we can plant some seeds in there we'll just punch some holes in the bottom and we'll plant some seeds in it because it saves buying plant pots it's much better um but then i end up with them hanging around the house um i've only got one of them so i can't do it at the toddler group with the children i don't want to go out and buy more just for the sake of planting seeds I could save it to do seed planting with my grandson, but at the moment he's still under a year old. So how old will, how long will I have to keep this little pot in order to do that activity? So again, I'm struggling, but this is going into the cardboard waste bin. Um, this one's going. <laughs> Maybe in three years time, I'll be thinking, oh, I had a little cardboard pot that we could plant these seeds in. What have I done with it? Toilet roll tubes, you can use those for planting seeds as well. So there's no need for me to keep this. It can go to recycling. Uh, I'm not going to count it as one of my items for decluttering because it is rubbish at the end of the day. But there you go. That is how my zero waste lifestyle affects my minimalist lifestyle. And every time I walk into my dining room, I'm like, oh, there's so much crap in here. And I start rooting through the bags thinking, oh, yes, I was saving that for that. And I need that for that. And I don't want to get rid of that because. Are you the same? Do you struggle like this? Or do you think I'm absolutely mad in the head? <laughs> I'm committed to the cause. I'm more committed to the zero waste cause than I am the minimalist cause, I think. Although I don't buy new stuff if I can help it. So I'm not bringing, I shouldn't be bringing crap into the house, but I'm bringing other people's crap into my house. Help me.